everyone welcome back to the second session of worship ministry um, let's continue uh, in um, chapter three we discussed in the previous class uh, previous session about uh, the four relationships that make or break us uh, to have a successful uh, worship ministry um, and now we very briefly talk about the goals of a worship ministry uh, uh, Christopher go ahead I don't know what happens. Christopher raises his hand and he leaves the meeting. Hi, uh, Christopher, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is actually to um, one of my earlier points uh, in, in a previous class where, you know, the, um, the, uh, the audience uh, for the uh, praise and worship team is, is really uh, God. Um, and um, uh, I just think that there are times when um, uh, it's it's very important to be able to also have a relationship with the with the audience uh, or the congregation, um, you know, which basically means that uh, uh, the congregation and the worship team are um, together in in unison uh, unison uh, you know praising and worshiping God, yeah. and um, the worship team is really like a, you know like a facilitator. To provide to this, I mean, for, to meet their objective, yes. and um, 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 just two examples really quickly that I can I can think of is you know like in a in a, in a, in a soccer match where you know someone scores a goal and you know the the person who has scored the goal is you know you know going and you know telling the audience he puts his both his hands up and tells the audience to you know to cheer uh, because uh, you know they they want to win you know that that match. And the and the audience is so important to be able to uh, to, to meet that objective. Yes. And the, the the second one is uh, is a little bit of a personal story where you know a long time ago when I was uh, I mean uh, really young maybe around eight nine years old I uh, attended this um, this musical um, you know, this pretty famous musical called Jesus Christ Superstar uh, that was in Mumbai and um, in another city and. Um, as the as the um, the cast was actually getting into the uh, onto the stage, they um, they didn't come onto the stage you know, from the back, but they came through the aisle itself. And I still remember that you know uh, it was Jesus who in, I mean, who's the person who was playing the the, the role of Jesus in that uh, musical. He bent down and uh, and um, said something to me. I can't remember you know how how you're doing or whatever. And that really touched me. It was like a, a real personal kind of you know interaction. Right. And I still remember I was, you know, like telling my my mother or my father, I saying that you know, Jesus, Jesus actually spoke to me just now, you know, right. and um, um, so I think that that audience, uh, sorry, the congregation is, is so very important, and that, that relationship um, makes that um, you know that participation as well as that um, that need for the for the congregation to be an be an intrinsic part of of this um, praise and worship and not it could be beyond praise and worship also even you know just in track uh, just being in tune with um, you know the, the yes. sermon for example you know when the, when the pastor says um, amen and you know the entire audience is like you know uh, the entire congregation is saying yeah. it with so much of uh, passion so yeah. just the point over there you know that that relationship is it, yeah, I don't know where it fits in, but it probably could be the fifth one. Yeah, so just sorry to mention that. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that uh, as well. Uh, but uh, so here's the thing, right? Uh, again, it comes down to uh, spiritual maturity, uh, like what I mentioned to Louis as well, you know, to what he said. Uh, and the reason I say that is, yes, absolutely. We are there to, you know, minister to God. Uh, first and then we are you know we are serving the congregation as well yes uh, and I also mentioned that we need to be very sensitive to the congregation that you are leading as well right so for example uh, you know I mean it again comes with spiritual maturity as a worship leader say you're leading a song uh, and then you know you just um, you you for it let's take the topic of repetition 
uh, you know, as an example. I, I wouldn't say repetition uh, is bad or good. I mean, there's you need to be sensitive to what God is doing, what God is leading, right? So you would repeat a chorus uh, if you feel like, okay, that's where the Holy Spirit is leading and that's where the song, you know, he wants you to go in that direction. And so you lead the congregation, uh, you know, and if you're not sensitive and if you are just doing say vain repetitions and you've lost the congregation the congregation is just like staring at you and say okay dude what are you doing move on kind of a thing uh it, it, it happens isn't it um and so what i'm trying to say is yes you have to be sensitive to the congregation their background and whatnot but also you have to keep in mind that say if you're the worship pastor if you're the pastor uh, you are their shepherd and you are also leading them, right? And slowly as we go on this journey, uh, you know, okay, you know what God's put in your heart for your congregation. Uh, we just can't be in the same place thinking, okay, you know, uh, this is the congregation, this is the background, that's where they're comfortable at. No, but slowly and steadily, you hold their hands kind of thing. And then you take them to the place where God has told you to take them, right? And that journey, uh, you know, we take time that's where we as pastors or leaders should be patient right so we need to take them into the deeper levels of intimacy with god we as shepherds and so that is also there so you you know there is a part where you have to honor the congregation uh, this thing and you also need to know you as a shepherd as their leader you you have this responsibility to take them deeper into their uh, relationship with god as well right um so yeah just adding to what you've shared but thanks for sharing that, Krista. Yeah, thank you. So uh, um, the next this section from uh, the bottom of page 36, we'll start discussing about, just talk very briefly about the goals of a worship ministry. Uh, a vision is important. Uh, having a goal is uh, crucial, um, right? So uh, a team needs to know where they are going, and the one who's leading the team needs to know uh, where he or she is going uh, because Vision is crucial. Without that, it will be like you're just running on a treadmill, uh, so to speak. Okay, a lot of work can get done, but then it will seem like you're just running in the same place. Um, so, uh, you know, having a goal, uh, you know, will always uh, help in that journey. I like having specific goals, having goals that are measurable, right? Uh, having goals um, that are actionable. So with that in mind, just, yeah, just a few, um, you know, is one of the goals is nurturing nurturing an encouraged and joyful worship ministry community okay uh, nurturing one of them so what is the meaning of nurture what is the meaning of nurture the question for us okay I, I haven't said as uh, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace guys so <laughs> you know, what do you mean by nurture what does it mean to take care, Kung says, okay. What else? Charles, Louis, Nisha. Uh, can I say something, sir? Yeah, sure, please. Uh, I think not sure is the attention and the care you give in the process of maturing. Mm. Uh, it's the uh, care okay. given the process of maturing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Louis. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything? Investing. Investing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks, Rupa. To bring up and look after. Okay. So, Bajit, anybody, anything? What, 
what do we what, what image or what picture do you see i mean i'm sure most of us can think of uh, when we nurture a child uh when a parent uh, parents they nurture the child um, how how do they do that and why do they do that right they take care of it they invest into the child right uh, you're in their journey of uh, you know as they're growing from an infant to a child um, to a teenager to a young adult etc etc uh, you are nurturing them. You are taking care of them, right? You are investing in them. You are leading them. You are guiding them, right? Uh, in many ways, you are a shepherd um, to them, right? And in this context, you are the shepherd. And one of the min goals of the worship ministry can be uh, nurturing and encouraged. Uh, that means you are investing. You are taking care. You are creating, right? A joyful worship ministry community. Um, you know, so we can. Talk about just creating a community or the importance of community at uh, at um, at length, but we'll do that sometime soon. But uh, the importance of nurturing and encouraged and the joyful worship ministry community, creating um, effective, consistent, and beautiful and uh, worship environments. Right, creating uh, effective and consistent uh, worship. Uh, environments and beautiful worship moments right one of the things that i mentioned was uh you know for the goals to be successful um they need to be uh, specific right they need to be measurable uh and if you are and one of the goals of your worship ministry is to create uh you know something that's exciting and whatnot um how do uh what uh what are some of the examples of a goal that can be specific versus uh, some of the goals that are not specific? Uh, can anybody think of that, uh, an example? Some of the goals that are specific and uh, some of the goals that are not specific. Anything uh, that you'd like to share? Go goals that are measurable versus goals that are not measurable. Any examples? Okay, so one of the examples that I can think of is um, say for uh, I can ask the team to just say start writing songs versus a more specific goal can be uh, let's write three congregational worship songs um so you see the difference right one is very generic very general uh, okay a goal let's start writing songs okay you know uh versus uh let's write three congregational worship songs so now all of a sudden it's become very specific okay i'm gonna write three songs uh and uh we're gonna do uh and it's, we're going to make it very congregational. It's, so it's not just a very uh, a solo act kind of a thing. Okay, so there's more direction. And uh, as, an, as an example that I shared when we released our first album, is that we just didn't set out on a project to write songs. We had a very specific uh, time uh, and a theme given to us. Okay, we're going to write songs based on these psalms. So now we know where to look to, what to look for. Okay, um, it could be another example, specific and very generic thing. Um, to train a volunteer worship leader versus, uh, so train a volunteer worship leader versus train uh, Christopher to lead worship for Sunday night service. Okay, uh, so see Christopher is not him. Sorry, Christopher, I'm just using your name as an example because as I'm thinking of the example. Okay, so instead of saying, okay, here's the goal. We're going to train a volunteer. That's very generic. I don't know who is this volunteer, whatnot, right? Versus I'm going to train an individual specifically to lead worship, uh, right? So uh, any other examples that you can think of uh, a very specific goal versus a non-specific kind of a goal? Right, time to practice. Yeah, so time to practice versus what are you going to practice in that time? Yeah. 
he goes, uh, just give me another minute because there's no one at home. Uh, someone just very disturbing me with the calling, but just give me another minute, please. Uh, I'll be back. I'm so sorry. Everything I dreaded not to happen today is happening today when my when no one is at home. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, but anyways, so let's just move on. Uh so you have um you as some of the worship ministry goals is nurturing, creating, um, and establishing longevity in your volunteer force of musicians, techs, and leaders. Establishing longevity, uh, this can't be stressed uh, enough, the emphasis on it, the importance of it, um, is you need to make sure that they don't burn out, like you know, using them over and over and over again for everything, and then eventually they're like, you know, they quit the team, and so the importance of the, the roster, the rotational system, and whatnot is uh, super crucial, uh, which we will talk about that in the very next point. So establishing, so three goals of the worship ministry is nurturing them. Are you investing in them? Are you taking care of them? Uh, are you creating a culture? Right? Uh, are you creating effective, consistent, and beautiful worship moments? Um, establishing uh, longevity in your volunteer force of musicians, techs, and uh, leaders. Right, um, and now we move into the section where we talk about the daily tasks of running a worship ministry. Right? Daily task of running a worship ministry. Uh, the task of scheduling and rostering team is one of the first things that we will see. The task of reducing or sh scheduling uh, and rostering teams.
check. You guys, can you hear me? Oh boy, okay. My internet connection dropped up. Something is really not right today. My sincere apologies, guys. Okay. Thanks. Um, can we continue? <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> So uh, we're in page 37 uh, of the content. Uh, we're talking about daily tasks of uh, running a worship ministry. Um, yes, there are daily tasks of running a worship ministry. It's not uh, just a Sunday morning thing of uh, showing up to church uh, and start leading worship. There are tasks every day, and that's what we will discuss in this section. Is one of the tasks is scheduling and rostering teams, right? Scheduling and rostering uh, teams. So I, I want to one more time just uh, share that roster uh, tab with you, and just uh, take us through just some of the uh, you know the entire roster and how it looks. It's not it's not complicated. Um, it's not a complicated thing. Um, so as you can see, we have a few sheets. Uh, here we have the sermon plan and some of the songs suggested for ministry time. This, These are some of the songs that are suggested uh, to, to be sung post the sermon because um, Pastor Ashish has requested that we will move into a time of ministry that focuses on healing and deliverance. And so just a few suggestions to the team. And um, so here we have some of the jam rooms suggested for the team where they can meet for practice um, and here's the roster um, you know of all the worship leaders who will be leading worship at different locations so um, as a, as some of you know that we have uh, five different locations one is bangalore central bangalore south north east and west um, and um, the names that i mentioned they're including the Children's Church uh, worship leaders are mentioned here. And this is a sheet only for worship leaders, um, right? The dates are mentioned. And now we look into the teams uh, rostered uh, every Sunday uh, specifically. All right, so for 18th, uh, so I led at Central on the first Sunday. Uh, this was my team, Jonathan. Uh, acoustic guitar so everything is very specific so you can see the keys acoustic guitar electric guitar one if you're lucky you have electric guitar two um, you know, bass the drums uh, vocals um, MD is what we call it as uh, what we call as music director um, so at this and this is only at central um, so where we have one person uh, on the stage who will also be MD or music directing so they will have a mic and uh, when they speak, only the team members will be uh, hearing, will be able to hear on the mic. Um, so they'll be directing, they'll be in conversation with the worship leader saying, okay, can we go to the next song? Uh, do you want to change the song or do you want to stay in the moment? All of those technical stuff, okay? So anyways, um, this, is, this is how the roster looks like. Uh, not, uh, it's, it's more of a one-man army kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, South, we have a little more than one man, uh, East and West. Okay, so this this is how um, a worship team roster uh, for APC looks like. Uh, very simple, um, but yeah, that's what it is. So task of so this is a huge thing. It is some when I'm rostering teams, it takes me a solid five days uh, to put together a roster it's uh, it's another challenge here is getting people's availability uh, you know remember uh, that uh, i'll show you an example of what my roster message also looks like in the next chapter uh, but then so sending out the message and getting everyone's availability we need uh, we are a team of at least 50 people uh, following up with 50 people uh, getting their dates reminding them to send their dates uh, and uh, if I need a worship leader to, for a certain uh, Sunday, and if I don't have anybody, uh, check with the 
two, three people saying, asking them, hey, can you, are you free to lead on this Sunday? Are you available? And all of that. And if they say no, I have to check off alternate things. So uh, making a roster is a very time consuming thing. Uh, you can also ask Pastor Jay Kumar. And he's so glad I'm doing it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, two ways, uh, you know, some of the churches that approach uh, this roster method is one uh, is the team model and the other is a band model. Okay, so what is a team model? So some worship ministries run on the team model. In other words, they involve many people rotating uh, between different leaders. And this is the model that we follow at APC. So every Sunday, uh, you know, it's not the same team that's playing together. There are different individuals and every month you will, you, you will be playing with different individuals and not the same team, right? Um, they involve many people rotating between different leaders, creating different bands, each worship service. So musicians get to know each other and get diversity in their experience. Okay, so this is very intentional as well. So this is the team model. And other worship ministries run on the band model, uh, which means uh, so they have, say, band A, band B, band C, and band D. They have a set of musicians that will lead. Uh, you know, there's the same set of musicians that will lead uh, every alternate week or every week or every one one Sunday a month and whatnot. So that basically is what a band model is. Uh, you know, and and if you don't know which one to use, and if you're going to be leading a worship ministry, see which model uh, suits your church uh, the best and pick that and, and work on that, right? Um, the thing about having a band model is um, most of them, you know, will give their availability, say, four or five months in advance. And so they know, okay, this is when they are rostered and to be playing or to lead worship and whatnot. And so they can plan uh, the other part of their life around that as well. Whereas the team model is more on a monthly based thing, right? So around uh, in, I send out a roster message on the 15th of every month, asking people for their availability, the worship team members for their availability, so I can start rostering them. Um, and the second point, uh, the second task is uh, kind of administrative and also pastoral is what I've all, we've already discussed in the previous point in uh, the, your relationship with the team members, right? The second task is the task of pastoring your team members, which is also in line with nurturing them, right? So as a leader, as a pastor, uh, we are called, you know, you need to be proactive, uh, give them pastoral care, uh, you know, uh, take genuine interest in their lives, right? Uh, you know, take the time to ask team members who seem to be carrying a heavy burden, what you can do to support them specifically in prayer or in scheduling uh, and whatnot. So just building relationship is, um, it's nothing again complicated, but just taking a genuine care and uh, pastoring them is crucial. And the third task is the task of meeting with your pastor. Okay, these are the daily tasks of worship ministry, remember, okay? Um, and so the third task is the meeting with your pastor. So there are two kinds of meetings. Um, one is uh, meeting him uh, regarding the vision, and that will happen around, say, twice a year, right? You, you, you're meeting with the pastor to discuss very specifically about the vision uh, for that particular year in the direction that he wants to go on. And the other meetings are... Uh, monthly recurring meetings that will happen to just give him the update of what's happening in your worship ministry. Uh, remember, uh, the the one point that we discussed is um, there is no such thing as over communication uh, with your pastor. Okay, so that's what happens. Uh, you know, in this meeting, or uh, you can uh, you will also keep him updated via emails, saying, okay, in, in the month of February, in the month of March. This is what happened with, with with the worship ministry. We went on a retreat. So and so many people came. This is what we did uh, in the in the uh, at the retreat, etc. Uh, etc. Et okay. So the task of meeting with your pastor uh, is one of the daily tasks of leading a worship ministry. And another task is um, again. Uh, by the way. Um, if, <laughs> If all of these points so far was uh, not fun and exciting, um, welcome to worship ministry. Okay, 
the fourth point is the task of budgeting and uh, paying for resources. Okay, the task of budgeting. Um, so again, once again, in the context of worship ministry, uh, if you're planning, say, worship retreat or worship team camp or worship team getaway um, or arranging breakfasts or lunch or whatnot, um, everything is has to be budgeted, right? For And an example here for if you're planning for a worship team retreat, um, you know, we need to plan ahead before that happens. So for example, uh, I have to propose, uh, I mean, I have to come back and, you know, plan and say, okay, this is the location, the venue where we will be having the camp. And so what is the price uh, of that camp? Say, you know, it's a, a lakh. Um, and then how much is it going to cost per head? Is there a travel expense? You know, so you put it all that in an Excel sheet and say, and say, this is the expected estimated expense uh, and so you send it to pastor uh, by copying the accounts team and asking him for his approval right so you have made a budget um, right or for another word say um, for the some of the songs that we record right uh, you would have seen battle cry on wonder so for we need to put a budget for the video shoot once again, how much is it going to cost for the location? Uh, how much for the vendors? You know, there are so many different vendors. Are you hiring a camera? How many cameras are you hiring? Are you hiring lights? Are you hiring generators? Are you hiring lunch? Uh, I mean, catering for the people who will be there. Uh, all the small things, okay, the juice and the snacks and all of the details has to be in the budget. Um, having fun already? Okay. And <laughs> And then you send it out, uh, you know, for approval. Um, and then, you know, and it doesn't end there. Your job doesn't end with putting up a budget. You have to follow up with making sure that the vendors are being paid, that paying the resources. Right? Um, that's another thing. Um, what else? I mean, so I mean, guys, this this list can go on and on, okay? And it will be it will look very unique to your church, uh, to to your setting. So I just don't want to give a few examples of where I am at and just put it in a box and say, okay, this is what it. No, uh, but this will be one of the tasks if you are leading a worship ministry. Uh, and um, okay, so that's one of the things. And another task of leading a worship ministry is. Uh, planning music for uh, the week and year. Okay, planning music. We are getting uh, talking about music. Okay, because worship ministry will is a huge part of it is music related, right? So many of the most effective worship ministry leaders uh, I know are always swift swifting uh, through the most fresh and appreciated songs coming out on the radios at the events. Uh, and whatnot. So you're keeping yourself updated uh, with what's happening uh, in the in the worship circle around the globe. What are some of the new songs that are being produced that are, that are coming out? Um, the fresh thing. So you're listening to it, and then you know it's one of it, and you start planning uh, the year around it. Uh, there are tens and thousands of beautiful songs. Uh, you know, listen to many, select few, learn fewer. Still, that's the process uh, that I'd like to follow. So listen to many. You know. Uh, um, we have uh, access to technology like never before. Right? We have access to resources. We have access to songs like never before. Uh, just ten years ago, I couldn't uh, imagine that you know some of the songs artists uh, can be available, uh, you know, in Bangalore or in India, right? So how it used to work here is if we wanted a CD or a, of an artist, the artist would have released a CD, like say five years ago, and five years later it would reach us over here, and then I would read that CD or a cassette. Do you, does anybody remember cassette? <laughs> it's like wow, it's like gold. And but now we have Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, all these uh, <laughs> uh, all these uh, streaming devices uh, that is. You know, allows us to listen to music uh, at you know at our fingertips. Um, so, you know, how you go about planning music for the week and the year is uh, once again, let's say you know, in line with the sermon series. Pastor Ashish is super organized. If you don't know that already, um, right? So he has the whole sermon series planned for an entire year. 
uh, he'll send it out to all the ministry teams. He's like, okay, this is what it is. And he's also flexible. It's not that most of the times he sticks just to it, but he's sensitive to, okay, you know, to change it and whatnot. But I say even 60, 70% of it, if he, if, if he does it, it works for us. So he sent out the thing. And now as a worship pastor, uh, it's also my responsibility to, to put together songs that will, uh, you know, um, what do I say? That, that will kind of uh, reflect the theme of the sermons as well. So that's what planning music uh, for the week or the year will look like. In addition uh, to uh, special Sundays, say, uh, say Easter Sunday, uh, Good Friday, Christmas, yeah, New Year's, um, and and whatnot. Right. So plan ahead for major services. Uh, so Christmas, Easter, as mentioned, select songs early, uh, suggest songs to your teams um, early. So that's one of the things. That's one of the tasks, uh, daily tasks of leading worship ministries, planning music for the year. Uh, and the sixth task is the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church. Right, uh, wider pastoral work of the church. <clears throat> Hospital visits, funerals, weddings, purchases, premarital counseling. Um, so there are two sides to this coin. Uh, you know, you, as a worship pastor, I cannot say I'm the worship pastor. So I'm not going to do, you know, go to funerals or do anything there. Or, you know, I'm not going to visit hospitals uh, and whatnot. Why? Because I'm only the worship pastor. I take, I'm responsible only for the worship ministry and whatnot. Um, the wake up, uh, you know, won't work like that. It's 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 a beautiful thing to share in the wider pastoral work of the church. You are a worship pastor, but yet you are still a pastor, right? So it is also your responsibility to share in the wider pastoral work of the church. And also, secondly, let your other pastors and leaders know the time slots in which you can do other tasks. Okay, so uh, there will be, uh, you know, a, those who will approach you and say, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? And whatnot. So this is the other side of the coin I was talking about. Right. Um, so let your other pastors and leaders know the time slots in which you can do other tasks and the time slots in which you are otherwise occupied. Build steel walls around your planned time slots until everyone understands you are very, very serious about keeping your time ordered. Okay, so you, you guys understand, right? What, what the point is all about? Uh, saying, okay, you know, you are you are sharing the wider pastoral, uh, you know, responsibility and whatnot, but at the same time, not at the cost of uh, not doing your work as well. Okay, so if if there's another task that needs to be done, if someone is approaching you to, to, to do something else, uh, you very politely say, okay, uh, you know, I'm free at so-and-so time. I can only do it at that time. Until then, I have to finish this work that has been assigned to me, which is important as well. Because the work that you do as a worship pastor is only you can do that work. If you don't finish that work, uh, nobody else will be able to finish it, right? Because it's very skill-specific. Uh, you understand what I'm saying, yeah, guys? I hope I hope you guys are following. <laughs> okay, so the task of sharing with the wider pastoral work of the church. That's uh, one of the tasks. Um, the seventh one is the task of honor, uh, honing your musical and leadership skill. Okay, the task of honing your musical and leadership skill. Um, this I'm kind of teaching uh, to myself uh, as well uh, is out of experience because worship a uh, ministry in general can keep you very busy right uh, because the work especially in ministry doesn't end never ends it's not like nine to five and you shut off uh you might get a message at 10 o'clock saying okay you know this family so and so passed away or whatnot you have to be ready to just go and uh you know be be present be available uh, and so, so many examples like that. So ministry in general will keep you busy. And if you're a worship pastor, if you're also a musician, it is very, very, very important for you to keep practicing, uh, you know, keep honing, to keep getting better uh, in your craft. Right? David was skillful, and, and it is his skill that made him stand before kings. 
right? It was so skillful that he made instruments. Uh, and so, uh, you know, honing your musical skills in addition also to uh, a leadership skills is the way that you can improve as a person, as a leader. Can you grow? All right, because it always requires uh, refining. Uh, okay, so these are just some of the few tasks and my experience uh, as a worship pastor um, that, that that you will be doing in a day-to-day uh, scenario, right? Um, is there anything else uh, you think uh, can be added? Okay, so very quickly, let's just go through uh, the, all the tasks of uh, running a worship ministry. The first one is the task of scheduling, rostering teams. Uh, it could not just be the worship team, it could be multiple teams, different teams, uh, the sound team, the media team, etc. Uh, the task of pastoring your team members. Let's not forget that. The right? task of meeting with your pastor and the task of budgeting, paying the resources, the vendors, a uh, task of planning uh, music for the year and for the week. Uh, task of sharing the wider pastoral work of the church, uh, the task of honing your musical and leadership uh, skill. Okay. Um, so that that's the conclusion of chapter three, and I think I'll uh, stop here for today, uh, and uh, I will uh, resume chapter four uh, next week. Yeah, is that okay, guys? Yeah, I hope everybody's still alive. With uh, thanks for bearing with me today with all those interferences and the internet failing and whatnot. Thank you so much. For <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah, you're welcome, Charles. Thank you, guys. Uh, you guys take care. I'll see you all next week. Thank Bye. you, Pastor. God bless you.